Hey guys, I want to give a big shout out to the folks at DF Robot for sending over the Latte Panda 3 that we're going to take a look at in this video. So this is a Latte Panda 2 432, and it will always hold a special place in my heart because this is the first device that a company ever sent me. Uh, and I've been using it uh, for the last few years that I've had it. This is actually the device that I started doing all of my self-hosting videos on when I first got into doing Docker videos and that sort of thing. Uh, it was a Latte Panda 2 432, um, and, and it will always hold a special place in my heart. So uh, when the folks at DF Robot uh, offered to send me the Latte Panda 3 uh, 864, of course, I had to say yes. And so that's what we're going to take a look at in this video. Uh, you'll notice that they are very, very similar in their aesthetic here. Uh, in fact, it'd probably be easier to see if I did it this way. But uh, the Latte Panda 3 is a little bit bigger. Uh, it's got 50% more cooling capacity with this uh, heater, or the, not heater, this fan assembly that's on here compared to the old style. Uh, you can see that it's actually moved back a little bit and it's longer. In fact, the entire board is about 10 millimeters longer uh, on the Latte Panda 3 versus the Latte Panda 2. However, there are a lot of things about the Latte Panda 3 that did stay the same, and that includes uh, things like the Arduino coprocessor uh, set up on here. Uh, I absolutely love that they've got this built in. So you've got all of your different Arduino stuff going on here. Uh, in fact, it has an Arduino Leonard AT uh, Mega 32U4 uh, built on here for the coprocessor. And of course, over here on the other side, we're going to get our power management stuff, uh, some audio, uh, I squared C, RS-232, uh, USB, and some DC plugs over here. I believe this is going to be USB 2 uh, for these plugs right here. Um, on this end, we've got uh, we've got three, if I could get that centered there, we've got uh, three USB 3 ports. Two of these are USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-A, and one of these is Type 2 Gen A, but also USB 3.2. So on this side, we've got a USB 2.0B port. Uh, we've got a uh, one gig LAN port, that's RJ45. Uh, headphone microphone combo jack here. And again, we've got our USB-C uh, port here that supports uh, power delivery PD, uh, as well as display port and a USB 2.0. Uh, this display port is uh, 1.4, so again, also supports uh, 4096 by 2160. Uh, as I may have mentioned before, I hope I mentioned anyway, uh, this does have uh, an Intel Celeron N5105 that's a uh, 2 gig uh, base clock with a 2.9 gig uh, boost clock, 4 cores, 4 threads, so no hyper threading on this. It also does have uh, Intel UHD graphics uh, between 450 and 800 megs uh, for its frequency range. It's got LPDDR4 8 gigs at 2933 uh, mega transfers per second. And if we flip it over uh, right here, we're going to have a 64 gig EMMC version 5.1. I believe mine was from SanDisk on here. Uh, we've got a couple of uh, expansion slots. We've got an M.2 uh, M slot that supports NVMe drives. That's going to be this one right here, uh, right there. And then this one is an M.2 key B uh, that will support PCI 3.0 uh, uh, by one, uh, USB 2, USB 3, SATA SIM, uh, and then supports uh, also, you know, 4G and 5G modules there. So uh, lots of options for expandability here. So for my setup, I've got a silicon power 256 gig NVMe drive uh, that's going to go over here on this side. And then a, a, another silicon power uh, 512 gig a SATA 3 drive that's going to go in this B key right there. So that'll give me 750 gigs of storage. But before I get into any of that in the future, what we should do now is go ahead and uh, get this thing plugged in, boot into it, and kind of take a look around the BIOS as well as the operating system that comes on here. Okay, so here we have the Latte Panda 3 plugged in with HDMI, Ethernet, it's power plug. Let's make sure that is seated in there all properly. And then we've got a USB plug right here. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is actually hit uh, the power button right there. There's our little indicator light. Now we'll jump over to my desktop where I've got Tiny Pilot up and running. So let's, oops, let's get into our BIOS hopefully here just real quick. And there we go. So uh, here we are, we've got a BIOS of, of uh, American Megatrans. We can see when our last uh, build date was, the access level. We're using a Jasper Lake uh, ULX Intel Celeron 5105, again at two, two gigahertz. Uh, or 2000 megahertz, however you want to uh, rate that. We, our total memory is about eight gigs at 2933 mega transfers per second. Of course, we've got just a full uh, list of all kinds of stuff that we can go through in the BIOS here, but um, it's all fairly basic as far as that's concerned. So let's come over to, uh, let's just boot into Windows here just real quick. And while I'm at it, I should have done this already. Uh, let's go ahead and go full screen just like that. 
Okay, so this does come with Windows 10 on it. It also was already uh, kind of logged into already by Latte Panda. Uh, they uh, did actually install uh, our, the Arduino software on here already. Uh, so that's set up and ready to go. However, uh, I did want to take a look at some uh, performance stuff, um, just, just to get an idea of what we can expect from this device. So let's go ahead and open up CPU ID. Uh, so here we can see kind of what's going on. Uh, our temperatures are, are actually looking uh, okay on there. So it is fairly warm in this room, a little over 80 degrees. Uh, that's Fahrenheit, of course. And if we're right here, we're saying that our, our package temperatures are 50, 55, kind of somewhere in that range. Not using a lot of power. This is a 10 uh, watt TDP uh, processor here. And here we can see that we are uh, cruising right along uh, with our processors there. So all of this looks good. So let's go ahead and open up uh, Heaven Benchmark 4 kind of there in the background. Like so, we're gonna, let's let's see here. No, we don't have anything. We're just gonna leave it like it is, I think, and click Run. And then once this boots up, we'll go ahead and uh, flip over to uh, Benchmark, just so we can kind of get an idea of what our numbers look like. And so now we'll just kind of hang out, give it a second to uh, finish up, and we'll take a look at the numbers once it's done. Okay, so here we are just a few minutes uh, later and we can see that our uh, score, our FPS was 24.9, score of 628, min and max of 12 and 48 uh, respectively. Uh, so here we can kind of get an idea of what it recognized uh, our, our system settings as. Um, so overall, not too terribly bad. I'm gonna go ahead and click on save there and click OK and click close. And then what we'll do is come back over here to uh, HW Info or CPU ID or whatever software we've got up. And here we can see that we had a high of 82 and 83 on the package and cores respectively. And uh, here we can see that these numbers appear to be kind of coming down a little bit, kind of slowly, but definitely they are coming down. So as you saw, it has Windows 10 pre-installed on it. I didn't do any of that. That was pre-installed. Uh, but here's the thing, right? The, the, I believe the, the vast majority of people who are going to be buying this aren't going to be using it as a desktop PC. It does have an Intel N5105 with Intel Video Quick Sync. And I think as a result of that, this is going to be more for people who have home labs, people that are going to be, you know, wanting to set up their own lightweight, small form factor, uh, low, uh, power consumption media server, whether it's Plex or MB or Jellyfin or whatever you want because of that Intel video quick sync that it's got on there. These things are a beast for media servers. And of course you could you could throw, you know, Unraid or Proxmox or Open Media Vault on here and have a little powerful machine to do most of the stuff you could ever want to throw at it from a small, again, power efficient home lab situation. So I do want to give a big shout out to the folks at DF Robot for sending this over, letting me take a look at it and share it with you guys. Let me know in the comment section down below, what would you use something like this for? I'm definitely interested in that uh, because again, I don't think people are gonna just leave windows on this. It's gonna get some flavor of Linux and I wanna know what you're gonna do with it if you had one of your own or when you get one of your own, what you plan on doing with it. As you would expect, you'll find a link to this in the description down below so you can pick one of these up for yourself. In addition to way, different ways you can support the channel if you wanna do that. Of course you don't have to, but you absolutely can. Uh, but I think with all that said, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. I wanna thank you guys for spending a few minutes of your day with me today, and I will talk to you in the next video.